You call it a hobby. I call it a way of life. No way that you can stop. As we wait you know on those I've five right, red the more lights. You try to block me, the more that I control the fight, and now you on the ropes. Now you on the ropes. What you gon' do? Quitting's not an option. That voice in your head that keeps telling you you got this. Lie to you. And now everybody's watching. You should have worked a little harder, cause man, your punches are garbage. It's lights out here in Poland, here we go! Oh, he's compromised, he's compromised! Can he do it all the way around the outside? Colin McAllister, what a move! Hello everybody and welcome along to the final time. Um, you will be hearing me saying that this season. It is the final round of the AIC. It is the championship decider. And um, it's been building up to this and the season is wide open. Anyone in the top seven can do it today. Joining me for the final round of this season is Craig Evans. I know you've taken uh, time out of your very busy schedule to, uh, to come along and commentate tonight for us. So uh, we thank you and um, I believe the viewers will thank you as well, Craig. Yeah, I'm happy to be here to turn this season on a high. I'm looking forward to this race. It's, it's been a great debut season, I must say. Um, just a lot of action. And it is a complete unknown for something that, that you've created yourself, Toby. So it's, it's good to see it succeed. And uh, let's hope this uh, final season at Oka, Okiyama will be a, be a good one. It's a nice wee circuit. I've done it many times myself, uh, mainly on iRacing and doing the, the rookie races of the Mazda. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the, the strong will drive Shirocco's uh, go round it. Yeah, um, it's been proven to be a good track in the pre-season testing races we've seen up and down um, down this season so um we can now go into and we're going to just quickly take a look craig at the driver standings of the top seven these are all guys that could win today so we have nut martinson ahead at 63 points he's coming off the back of two race wins in a row and his form is absolutely incredible and that, that has just slingshotted him right to the front of the championship two points behind him is the man we've been calling mr consistency all year long it's joshua robert wood then christopher betterson behind them who's had a few ups and downs this season same for callum spencer on 54 points behind him nate diaz who went out and surrendered his championship lead due to a retirement is on 50 points 10 points ahead of his teammate suede and then we have gareth lennon on 38 let's just point out that gareth lennon if he were to win today craig he would need the rest of the six not to score a point he would need to take the pole point and the win point so it's it's a tall order but it's doable for gareth lennon it is a tall order but it's it's a double-edged sword that one because his teammate spencer they both need to get a good result today for the team's championship as well so i know they've had their ups and downs throughout the season and they may not be in the best of terms as teammates but it would be nice for them to, to at least bring something home, whether it's a driver's championship or the team's on. So for Lennon, it is very, very far-fetched, and obviously you can't cut him out until it's mathematically impossible, but um, I think they'll both be looking at maybe the, the team's championship with Spencer got an eye on the, the driver's one as well. But it is all pretty tight at the top. Um, I think, to realistically, we've got to look at the top five. Danny Diaz is fifth, 13 points behind now Martinson, so it is also to play for as it is in the team's championship, so this is going to be a, a very tasty encounter to end the season. 
Yep, very true. We'll quickly take a look at that team's championship Craig was just referencing. Just so you know what's at stake today. GTFG going to the final round of the, uh, the uh, season with a five-point lead over Rothman's SLR, who are on 92 points. Behind them, just by two points, is Team EQU. So Rothman's SLR very much in a sandwich, um, but it's possible. Force Fizzy are up in fourth, thanks for, up in fourth sorry, thanks to the efforts of Nut Martinson over the last two races. And then down there, thanks to the efforts of uh, Christopher Pettersson mainly, but uh, recently showing great signs of improvement is Valeria Campagnari, which sees NORL in fifth place. Those five can all take the team's championship today, Craig. And um, like you said, everyone is going to be working their hardest for the team and just trying not to do anything silly. And um, we'll see how they get on as we go take a look at the qualifying. So as we take a look at qualifying for the first time since round one in Poznan, we see Rhinus Melgalis back towards the front of the grid. He actually takes pole position by six thousandths of a second from Ross McFarlane in P2. So great effort by Ross, again showing great signs of improvement at the end of the season. In third, we can see our first of the championship contenders, Nut Martinson, is up there. And then followed by him is Nickel Foggy. Great signs for him to have improvement. And then we have Callum Spencer, our next championship title contender. Joshua Robert Wood, another one. Andrew Pavia, and um, Evan Emery, and then we look at the likes of Toby Byrne ahead of Craig Evans, Gareth Lennon, who um, doesn't look like he will be able, he will not be able to win the championship now as he did not take that pole position point. But uh, then we have Christopher Pettersson, who is still able to do it if he has a good day here today. Zach, same for um, Zach Swader, who's uh, behind Valeria Campagnari. Then we have Colin McAllister, Stephen Paul, Josh Martin, Danny Diaz having a very, very tough day, considering he could win the championship today. It's going to be very hard to do it from 18th on the grid. 19th is Douglas Anderson, and finally is uh, Charles McBee rounding off the grid in 20th. And uh, unfortunately, Craig, we've already had one of our top seven rounded out of this championship just after the qualifying session. Yeah, well, I said it just pre qualifying there, that it would be a, it would be a tough ask regardless of, of where he qualified. It just goes to show, um, yeah, he, he, he's now out of the title running, but the team championship is still at stake, and it would be great for them to, to be the debut team winner. Um, of this league, so that'll be the that'll be where his his eyes are set now. Hopefully, I'm going to see them work together, despite going separate ways at the end of the season. And uh, yeah, still a lot to play for. Exactly, he mustn't get unmotivated, unmo unmotivated because there is a lot of uh, prestigious history to be had as the first ever constructors champion for the AIC. Could very much be Rothman's SLR at the end of the day. Let's go see how it all happens as we go take a look at the race. So here we are getting ready for the final time this season, Craig. It has been a season of ups and downs. It's been a season of chaos. It's been a season of uh, pretty strategic and strung out slow burning races in places too. We look at our pole sitter, Rhinus Melgalis from Ross McFarlane, and we are getting ready. The lights are on. We look a bit up and down the grid. There's the man who could win it all today, Craig. The guy who is the favourite to do so. There's the other guy who's just two points behind him. And just ahead of him is the guy who is just roughly about eight points behind him as well. So the guys, the top three guys that could win this all very, very close together. Christopher Pettersson um, excluded from that, obviously. But lights out. And away we go. And Rhinus Melgalis gets a pretty good start. And you can see Ross McFarlane under attack from Nut Martinson already, who covers him off well. So Nut Martinson up into P2, and that's great for his championship hosts. We have the two championship contenders of Joshua Robert Wood and Cal. Alan Spencer going side by side and we just saw an Isle of Base car going off at the start that is Craig Evans he gets passed by a YMR as he rejoins the track and that's Christopher Pettersson getting a bump from his teammate in the next section of corners he's going to go side by side with Christopher Pettersson now as we run up to the next hairpin we've got cars absolutely everywhere it's the last race of the season if you've got nothing to lose throw it on the line if you're battling for a team championship keep it cool and that's not keeping it cool Toby Byrne really gets aggressive with Andrew Pavia and now Evan Imre a bit of contact on Andrew Pavia as well and here comes Valeria Campagnari to have a go as well. And we can see cars absolutely area. I just saw damage. That's Charles McBee potentially out of the race after a Term 1 incident. And absolute chaos is going on here. And now we can see Stephen Paul has been forced off the track. He's going to go off at the um, last corner. And Craig, you better take over because there's so much chaos. Far too much for one commentator. I don't even know how you find words to describe all of that, Toby. They're still at it on the start of finish, mate. 
EQU cars are just starting left, right, and center. They're <laughs> swerving into, oh, they've collided, and there we go. One of the two of the EQU cars crashing into other down the start and finish three. And yeah, I don't know how did you find words to describe all this. There's just carnage left, right, and center on the opening lap. It's like the last race of a BTCC weekend. They're just going for it. Obviously, they're not using this car at the end of the season, so the <laughs> damage bill doesn't seem to care to these guys. But not Martins, and look at that. He's just not caring what's in his mirror. He's away in front and uh, looking looking like he's going to win the championship at the moment Toby's got a nice gap just to see Ross McFarlane coming up the inside of one of the Weimar cars not able to make the move stick sadly and uh, one of the Team EQ I'm not too sure which driver that is that's uh, Danny Diaz I think they're having to, to avoid him and then I, uh, oh, I don't even know Isla Base cars off <laughs> we've got everything happening right now Toby I think you're going to have to take back over again for the third lap <laughs> <laughs> so like we say if you've got nothing to lose now is the time to put it on the line and that is certainly being done by the midfield and lower tier drivers this season as we look at that is Christopher Pettersson he can't afford to put it on the line he's going side by side with a championship contender Sweda and Christopher and although they're having a mighty battle coming into this hairpin here where we cut to the Piper circuit this is not for points so it may be treacherous but there's not a lot of reward in it for Christopher Pettersson who gets the job done around the outside and let's not take anything away and Zach Swerder got a bit psyched out by that and went wide almost hit collecting Stephen Paul rejoining the track so a bit silly and that was a Northern Lights racing car taking an extra wide berthing in hang on mate don't be taking your red mist out on me we see Charles McBee then in the pits he's not going to retire why retire at the last race of the season just get out there and enjoy some fun in the car you're in a new team next year we don't need this car just go have some fun. And then we're going to take a look at the replay then, Craig. Look at the start, the initial getaway that Nut Martinson got on Ross McFarlane. He was able to then get ahead and immediately cover the inside back so Ross couldn't get back underneath him. And now we can see that view from Ross McFarlane start. And you can just see he just bogs down, doesn't he? He doesn't really get enough power. He, like, slips to revs. And you're going to see Nut Martinson there on the left side. And look how aggressively he covers that inside line. That was an inc that was really good stuff from Nut Martinson. Really impressive to get the job done decisively and prevent a comeback. I think we're going to have some more replays, Craig. So I'll let you um, I'll let you attempt <laughs> to describe them for a second time. Um, yeah, definitely. You know what? Just to go to Martinson there, that was a, a championship block. If I've ever seen one, that was uh, he was what he needed to do. Obviously, lost the position just there from McFarlane, and then gained it back coming into the the final couple of uh, S Ben Chicanes. And there's what is that uh, Josh Wood having a bit of an aggressive move up inside there? Um, and yeah, McFarlane just kind of got um, sandwiched out a little bit. We're on board with Evans now, following a few cars. Just looked to avoid the car in front of him, but too aggressive on the steering that just sent them out wide and uh, right in the field to the the back of the grid. Lucky not to collect the two cars just coming past him at the end there. Um, on board now with the, the Mackay and Brew car. Got McBee with his team at the inside. Must have scared him, honestly. He must have been scared by his teammate there. He's just driven, driven himself off the circuit into the wall and that's not the way you want to, to spend the last race of the season as we've got it from a, another angle car behind. Like he's just scared himself off the road there. So, yeah, not what, uh, what you want at all. This car is left, right and centre there. Understeer, understeer for days through these little final couple of corners. And um, I think the EQU cars must win a prize for the, the dodgiest drive at the last race of the season, just swerving <laughs> left, right and centre. There is no describing what their drivers are on today, Toby. Adopting a slightly <laughs> different <laughs> strategy. That's exactly what <laughs> <laughs> The different strategy than we're used to to try win the uh, championship is being deployed exactly. by Team EQU here today. And it's... Win. There are only two points <laughs> off second place, so they really should have been more careful, but they've effectively ruled themselves out of the uh, Constructors' Championship. We're looking at Callum Spencer chasing down Joshua Wobbert, uh, Wobbert, <laughs> Joshua Robert, Wobbert Rudd. <laughs> Joshua Robert Wood is being hounded by Callum Spencer. You can tell it's the end of the season. Our batteries are a bit drained, as well as some of the drivers, evidently. <laughs> and we're just looking at him. This is a quite an important battle, though, despite the laughter. This is quite an important battle to watch, because... Callum Spencer could easily take second place if he has a very good result today and somehow manages to win over Wood, um, but it's going to be tough for him to do that. We're looking at Rhinus Melngalis, and what a nice sight this is to see this man out in front, Craig. He's been struggling, hasn't he, all the way from Poznan, all the way. He's just had no... I don't think this is we potentially his first point since Poznan, um, and he was under a lot of pressure from ISR to keep his seat. He has renewed... Um, obviously, and I think that may have given him some confidence to go out there and really show what he can do. Sometimes well, that's what a driver needs. We're looking at Nut Martinson, who's arguably in a very promiscuous uh, place to, to win the championship. It's very possible he can do that from there. And a ni another driver who it's nice to see up at the front, Craig, is um, Nickel Foggy, who's um, on a single point, the only driver now not in double points. And, but it's nice to see him 
Starting to change his season around. It's a bit late, but nevertheless. Yeah, barely. You've got to get the points while you can. And uh, just going back to that uh, Magenis point, I uh, had a look at the stats there. And, yeah, this will be his first point of the season since the, the opening round of the, the championship. But uh, uh, at Poznan, we have, was that second place? Uh, second place he got behind his, his teammates. So, um, behind Spencer, even. Sorry. So, yeah, it'll be good for him to get, uh, get some points on the board and took me by surprise earlier on. I thought Martinson was winning, but that's just how big a game, how big a lead Magenis has. And yeah, you're right, it's been, it's been a long day, it's been a long season, so I'm, I'm mixing my words up too. <laughs> but, um, aye, Nickel Foggy, you were saying, nice to get him in the points again, so hopefully he'll, uh, he can stick that one out and get uh, get some points on the board for 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 his team. He's obviously moving on next season. Uh, I think they're, uh, well, he's staying with, with the NLR team, but there's been a, a little mix-up with that. Um, it's all on the, all the website, so rather than having me try to explain all the driver changes, <laughs> it's best to go to the website because it's explained <laughs> as best it can be there. But um, look at the, the, the battles here. I think it's calmed down after those first couple of laps. The, the gaps, the leading leading bunch of cars have, have had a, a, a nice gap. It's probably still kicking off in the background. But um, this is where all the important action is happening, despite there not being any overtakes. This is where the, the championship is going to get decided. Uh, we've got a lot of competitors very, very close together here. But um, as it stands, Martins is going to be the, the season winner. Season one winner, Toby. Yeah, and it would be, uh, let's talk about, really quick, let's talk about Nut Martins' second half of the season. So we look at his first half. I don't believe he scored any points in Poznan. Uh, I'm not sure he did in Mendedig either. He's had a pretty tough start at the, the first half of the season. And then it came to the second half, and he just turned it on and was was on so much fire and so much momentum that nobody could stop him. And um, the only guy who's looking like he can stop him today is Rhinus Mangelis, who is not in the championship fight, of course. So um, very good stuff for Nut Martinson. We're watching his teammate, who's had some good results here and there, but he's, he's not had that momentum and drive that his teammate of Martinson has had. Force Fizzy guys been racing each other for a long time now. They know each other inside out. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be Imre's season this time around as we're watching Spencer then. And this is a battle for championship points, obviously, um, for second and fourth place, I believe, in the championship. This battle is between uh, Wood in uh, third place. No, he's in fourth, isn't he, right now? And that's Cal Spencer in fifth place ahead of Imre. Yeah, it's a, a lot has calmed down, and I wonder if uh, potentially create some damage here and there for guys after that absolute crazy EQ, you being the main contributors of that, may have to rename themselves Pastor Maldonado Racing for the uh, the weekend. They've been a bit, bit aggressive, and I think a few guys will be a bit disappointed, but, like... They came into this and they, they had the choice. They either they play it sensible, like Rothmans, like GTFG, um, like, you know, Force Fizzy. They could play it sensible and go for the points, or they can just throw everything on the line. And I think that's what they did. And I think they bet on black and the roulette ended up going to red uh, for Team EQU on this occasion, Craig. To be fair, they kind of they did have to throw a lot of that. Danny especially was a lot further than the so. Um, he had to try and fight his way through it as hard as he could. Um, was a little bit aggressive in the start finish state. That being the, the main highlight that um, I noticed from the from the, the start there. But yeah, they had, he did have to kind of throw a lot at it and um, try and get uh, get some points on the board to, to keep fighting in this in this championship. Um, but going back to what you said about Martinson, managed to, to whap out the stats again. And uh, he managed to score points around two and three of the season. It was the lower half of the top ten, but he had he had get some consistent finishes on the board. But like you say, he's he's won the last two races without any questions, and he's like on for another podium here today. He was wanting to make it a hard trip, but I think Morganis is having um, making him making him think about that one um, again. But he'll be he'll be well chuffed with coming second and winning the championship, as I'm sure both of us would be as well. There's no need to push for the win. The guy ahead of him isn't in the title fight, so. He doesn't need to, to push hard. He's obviously got to watch for the cars behind him. He's got uh, Whittleby coming after him. But as long as he can maintain the gap and, and then keep a nice gap between them, then he, he he really doesn't have anything to worry about at all. You can see see Wood on screen now, just uh, porting along consistently. Um, he has, he has done pretty much all season, Toby. Yeah, and as you can see on your screen now, you can vote for your driver of the season, as we were just discussing there with the hashtag MDOTS, my driver of the season, is what that hashtag stands for in the comments of this video down below, guys. Please do, we'd love to know who is your driver of the season. The votes will be tallied up in the off-season and published on the ISR pages around the social media. And we'll get to discussing that for who our drivers are in a minute, Craig. But speaking as you say, yeah, Dunk Martinson has done everything you can, but it's a situation where you drive, I think, today more with your head than your heart. We're looking at an incident 
between um, cars 11 and 64. I think that's a bit of a visual glitch. I do apologise for that one um, as we move on. But yeah, who has your driver of the season been then, Craig? I mean, it's very easy to say, not Martinson, because he could win the championship today. But in terms of performances and who stood out to you, who do you think... Um, Who's, who's been your driver? Um, it, you're right. It's hard to look past Smart. He's really, really has turned on, especially the second half of the season, like you said. Uh, and nine times out of ten, you're going to put your money on the guy that wins the championship because they've, they've done the best. They have to do the best. But when you look at consistency, um, and I know we're talking about AI here, but a guy who doesn't actually do much racing is, is Joshua Robertwood. And his AI has just been consistent all, all season long. He scored points in every single race apart from Canada. Um, no other drivers managed to, to match that feat as far as I'm aware I think Spencer's probably come closest to that um, and Martinson as well but I think for me it's got to be, got to be Woods Woods, uh, Woods driver like I said done well all season scored consistently he's done very well to get high up in the standings and they've had a little bit of a better race in Canada we could be talking about a different guy leading the championship at this moment in time so for me my vote definitely uh, Robert Wood all yeah, yourself, Toby. I think I'd go with the same. I think our, as in the commentary booth, I think our vote solely goes to Joshua Robert Wood. And I think the reason for that is it is more impressive, like you say, because he doesn't do that much racing. There's, and he's, he's just come on and he's he's got right into it, you know. And it's he, he would be a bit disappointed not taking, if it ends like this, it will be a bit disappointed take, not taking the first ever championship or a championship. It's all the same in a driver's mind, isn't it? You don't matter if it's the first or the last, it's a championship and you love that. But um, he won't be taking that home if it stays like this, but to be, take home the, you know, potentially the best driver of the season, considering the status you were in, this time last year, he wasn't even thinking about racing. The, the closest thing Joshua of Robert Wood will have done to racing is driving around on, on GTA in the streets of Los Santos. So to come in here and really just turn it on and, and get to grips with the car and, and really make yourself look like a serious contender is really, really impressive um, for Wood. And we're speaking of Wood, and look at this. He's pulling in Nickel Foggy at quite a rate of knots. The gap has come down by about two or three seconds and Nickel Foggy's got a bit phased out there as Joshua Robert Wood's now going to go up the inside as a result of that. So Nickel Foggy got a bit crossed up and that's allowed him. Callum Spencer is trying not to let Robert Wood get away here for the championship. you got to remember this is a battle but for the Constructors title going on here. A bit of contact with Callum Spencer and Nickel Foggy. He goes up the inside but that's for the championship. GTFG versus Rothman's SLR and is Evan Imre going to make it through? No, he's not. Nickel Foggy is able to hold on to that but is he into the last corner no he is not Nickel Foggy this is absolutely gut-wrenching stuff Craig they needed these points more than anyone has he got a problem with his car do you think Craig because look look at the straight line speed surely that is a problem for Nickel Foggy Craig so no it just looked like you got, obviously went out of shape early on and that's what let the other cars go through and then again at the final corner he seems to be back up to the speed now but knowing Nickel Foggy that's certainly not a mistake that he is he does often um, if you look at him recently in, the, in his in his IV racing career, in his BSR career, he's ended up being promoted from the amateur, the pro am standings to the pro standings just because of his outright. Oh, pace. sorry, Craig, he's just uh, gone wide again. Just it's not what we're seeing today at all, is it? No, I Mike don't. Mackay Tom Callister coming past him as well, nice. So going from a lovely position in third to just dropping down the standings for Foggy, it's not what he wants at all. And we've got one of the wire mark cars catch up with him. I think that is um, Prevere coming close behind him. So yeah, and he's there gonna, he goes up the inside. Like, I think you're right. He probably does have a much more problem. So, oh, yeah, that so is that. That is the, uh, I believe that's the visual glitch we saw earlier. That'll be the incident that's under investigation. Oh, and he got stuck on the curb. Did you see that, Craig? Could not get the car off the curb. I wonder, there it is. There is an incident involving uh, cars 11 and 64 under investigation for an illegal overtake. I think that's pretty clean cut, Craig. That was definitely an illegal overtake. He used the pit lane entrance to get by. He was a slow moving vehicle, but um, regardless, that's, that's an illegal overtake, black and white. But yeah, that was um, it was opportunistic from Anderson to say the least. But uh, it's not going to pay off for him. But hopefully, for, for Foggy, will get back up to the speed. Now it was, um, it was two shocking laps. I didn't seem to know what happened. Whether it was a, a mechanical glitch with the car itself, or he just lost concentration. Maybe dozed off for a wee bit. But um, a man that's not dozing off is uh, not Martinson. He's obviously not been able to catch um, Alganis, but he's doing what he needs to do for the championship. I've um, got a replay here now. This is um, Anderson's. Take, he could have made the move. 
shouldn't have made the move and as our lovely graphic shows he's clearly going for a put in yeah, I actually genuinely thought he was going to go for the <laughs> go into the pits but uh, <laughs> he decides no he wants to carry on racing and uh, he doesn't care but he, he had there was nothing like that there to go for the overtake that's what I'm finding bizarre about that one but uh, we never I don't know who knows what's happening inside uh, that film. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Zach mentioned that a lot in the last one. Yeah, we got to keep it going. So we got to keep it going. He's a he's a he's a lovely character. But um, away from that now, oh, we're seeing the, the we. Uh, you know, That's time confirmation. Penalty, that... Time penalty. There we go. Gaining an un, an off uh, gaining an off track advantage, um, which is yeah to say the least, it was an unfair advantage, wasn't it? Right, we've still got battle happening throughout the field. Not at the front, though. It's, uh, as you were, uh, and uh, as what Martin's once told me, he's running a nice easy race, and he's, what two laps to go before he we crown him as the champion. Yeah, very good stuff for not Martinson so far. But as you're saying, I, in my opinion, Craig, that's a very lenient penalty for Anderson. You know, that could have easily got you a 10 second, but they've only seemed to penalise him for the time they think he gained. And I think three seconds is about what he gained there, because obviously he took a much tighter line, uh, which he actually isn't on the racetrack, so he was able to gain that time. Three seconds is probably the amount of time gained, so they've just taken that back off him and uh, put him effectively put him back where he should be. But... Maybe he took an extra wide berth to a, thinking he had a problem, he didn't want to waste any time and just, I don't know what the, the deal was with Dougie there, he just, a bit of a bit of silliness and a driving error which is he's obviously he's been punished for and he, now he just has to get on with it and try and make amends for that, for the silly mistake that he's, you know, he's done as now we are, I believe, starting lap 19, so it's almost time to crown our champion and it all looks said and done here, it's been another slow burner but I think it's been more strategic and you think about this Craig, think about this we saw at the start of the race Stephen Paul went off didn't he, he got forced out wide um, it turned out it was avoiding action so no one got penalised but he went out wide and he's currently running well outside of the point and we are looking here that force fizzy right there, who is a championship contending car for the constructors, is surrounded in a sandwich of um, of Rothman's SLR cars. So very possible for Rothman's SLR to take the win now. Um, only Joshua Robert would stand in the way, but a double points finish, I think, Craig, will be a bit more handy than a single points finish from Joshua Robert Wood. And maybe that's why Cam Spencer was so desperate to not let him get away, wasn't he? When Nickel Foggy had his first errors, he made a very aggressive move uh, to get by. He was desperate not to let him get away. We're looking at Rhinus Mongalis there for just a second, starting his final lap of the race, Craig. And um, it's been a stunning drive for Rhinus Mongalis, and surely a drive that confirms that ISR were correct to re-sign him and giving him another chance for the season then. So let's look around before we get to the end of the race. We are watching the man then, Craig. This is the man who hasn't scored any points, like you say, since Poznan. And this is an interesting record. His only points finishes, I think this will be a unique record, his only points finishes in the AIC have come from podiums. That's quite a weird thing to say, but we're looking at him coming around the final corner, and it's going to be Rhinus Melngalis who takes his first win in the AIC, ISR's first win in the AIC, and his first point since Poznan. So great effort by Rhinus Melngalis, but unfortunately for Rhinus, the attention's not going to go to him today. It's going to go to the man who finishes in second place. And I believe when all is said and done, Craig, we are about to see confirmation that that man, Nut Martinson, is the first ever driver's champion of the ISR AIC, Craig. And what a spectacular drive. What a spectacular second half of the season to come out of nowhere and uh, pluck the championship. Oh, definitely. It's well-deserved. Like three podiums in a row, a first, a first, and a second. That's just completely wrapped up from him. He did well to get his early points on the board as well, but... Just these last three races have just been phenomenal for Martinson, and it's completely, completely well deserved. Obviously, he couldn't do much about the, the win today. Um, I think we'll have to nickname probably Maganus Ricky Bobby. He must be watching too much Talladega Nights because it's either first or last for him, um, as, as we've seen today. And uh, Martinson couldn't catch him, but he didn't need to catch him. That's him. He's won the title. Um, attentions will also turn to the, the team's championship, which we'll go over shortly. But um, yeah, massive congratulations to to Nat Martinson and the on the Force Fizzy team on taking the debut AIC Season One Championship. 
So here are your race results. Then obviously Melangelis takes the win and Nut Martinson secures that second place to win the championship. Josh Wood and Callum Spencer had their battle, but they weren't able to bring the fire today. Unfortunately, we don't see any other championship contenders um, out of our top seven in the points after that. We saw Gareth Lennon, but of course he was rounded out after qualifying. Unfortunately for the Villain Campagnari, good result for him. Douglas Anderson, you can see there, Craig gets that three second time penalty, which actually swaps him and Danny Diaz around. So Danny Diaz does score a single point. So that uh, mistake proved costly, uh, Craig, as we look at the second second page. Yeah, the, <laughs> it does look costly. Um, run for the rest of the, the points as well. We've got Foggy ended up slipping down, not what he wanted. Um, together behind him, Farland Evans, followed by Burn, Paul, and the, the rest of the field. And Toby, here's the, the team stand. Uh, sorry, not the team standing, the driver standing. Little glitch there on the, the, on the graphic. Yeah. Um, which you could actually have probably sorted yourself, but if we'll go <laughs> <laughs> so we look at confirmation of Nut Martinson winning the championship. Callum Spencer manages to steal third place off Christopher Pettersson as he fails to score any points today. Gareth Lennon up in sixth, gained a position despite not winning the championship. Rhinus Mongalis, look, Craig, out of nowhere, comes into the top seven. So he could have been in contention if there was another round after this. It would have been a bit of a hard ass. It would have been an, another three or four rounds for him to take the championship. We see drivers moving up and down, a very colourful. Um, very colourful thing today. We see Andrew Pavia gains a position and him and his teammate actually finish on identical points, Craig, as do Craig and uh, Ross, which is interesting because Andrew Pavia has, I believe, sources are suggesting that Andrew Pavia has actually lost his seat at YMR for next season, Craig. So, uh, yeah, he gets fired and then he goes, well, I'm going to show you what I've lost. We look at the um, team standings and look at that, Craig. Rothman's SLR and GTFG finished the season on equal points, but because Rothman's have taken a win this season, they have a higher finishing position, which means they win the first ever team standings in the ISRA. I see Force Fizzy almost did it, didn't they, with their 10 points? That was why we saw Evan Imre pushing so hard. EQU, what, what strategy was that today? It was just crash or, crash or go home um, for them crash today. Or <laughs> crash or burn, and uh, Noel down in fifth. <laughs> And then we can see the likes of ISR, Mackay and Brew, and uh, Wireman. And unfortunately, Northern Lights Racing are the team that finish in last for the team standings. Unfortunately, um, those guys, I'm sure, will improve for the next season. Not, they're not guys to quit early, Craig. And I'm sure they'll be pushing for greatness. But wow, what? Just that is the closest team standings finish I think I've ever seen, Craig. It's as close as we could ask for as well, isn't it? Just Rothman, this I've got to say, congratulations to them. They got their wins on the board. I think they ended up taking two wins, both Spencer and Lennon got a win each, whereas the, the GTFG guys didn't get any wins, I'm afraid, despite their consistency throughout the season, especially from from Wood, and that's what, uh, that's what sealed at the end for them. They, they, they got their two two wins to GTFG's none, and that's made, that made all the difference. Um, and obviously Lennon getting back into the points again for the final race of the season really did um, hit home and, and help them secure that uh, driver's championship. So although they are... Um, separating their ways at the end of the season they can at least uh, have a nice big party to 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 end their um, end their partnership got a nice trophy for the the headquarters and they'll both be chuffed with what they've done for the season um from the, the team's point of view anyway they've done a great job haven't they and they deserved it but uh what a deadly weapon they could be next season craig they've actually signed wood for next season who was the sole reason GTFG were in such contention in the first place so that could be interesting but will losing Lennon a race winner affect them in any way and we're looking at all of our competitors from this season Craig and um, I want to thank you I want to thank Zach Swader as well who's been commentating with us and I want to thank everyone who's helped Craig get this league on its feet and get going and um, it's really been a great first season. We've learned little, there's many lessons to learn, and the likes of Donington and perhaps this circuit as well, a bit of chaos at the start. There's many things to learn, but things can only go forward here. And I, I'd, I'd like to say, uh, maybe a bit of bias here, but I think we've had an amazing first season. I think we've definitely put ourselves on the map with the action we've had this season. Uh, there's a guy who could have won it all but didn't, Callum Spencer. Um, I'm sure he'll give it his all next time. And there is the man, the myth, the legend, Nut Martinson. There is your champion who will try his best to uh, defend his crown uh, next time out, we hope. We're waiting confirmation that these guys will re-enter. Number 62, Martinson, the AOR-sponsored Force Fizzy driver. Did it all. Second season, uh, second half of the season was just unstoppable momentum for Martinson and uh, what a beautiful result. It's been an incredible first season, Craig. Ups and downs everywhere, and it all ends with that man taking the crown right there.